Learn to make sentences more forceful by choosing strong verbs. What's the big deal about strong verbs? Well, if sentences were cars, verbs would be the engine. You can pass inspection with a clunker that gets you from point A to point B, but no one will want to ride along with you if your jalopy sputters and coughs along, or if you can't drive faster than 25 miles per hour. In the same way, your sentences can be grammatically correct and still not have enough power or excitement to keep your reader in the passenger seat. And just as you can't make your car run smoother by changing the wiper blades or polishing the hubcaps, you can't charge up your sentences by simply adding adjectives, adverbs, or nouns. You have to work with verbs, and they have to be forceful. How do I know if I'm choosing forceful verbs? That's easy. Consider these two sentences about my dog, Muggs. Muggs is a messy eater. Muggs splatters his food all over the wall. Clearly, the verb splatters packs a bigger punch than the verb is. It's more descriptive, and it gives you something to picture. And this example brings up an important point. Always check to see if you overuse to be verbs. Is, am, are, was, were, been. When you say, mugs is a messy eater, your grammar is perfect, but you waste an opportunity to say mugs, gulps, slurps, sprays, slobbers, drools, splashes, drips, drops, and slings his food all over the place. To be verbs help clarify many ideas, so the goal isn't to eliminate them, but rather to recognize when a more emphatic verb would enhance your sentence. So, all I need to do is check for overuse of to be verbs? No, no, other verbs can be weak as well. Here's a good way to test the horsepower of your sentences. First, list every verb in your essay. Then, ask yourself if these words alone would allow the reader to guess what topic you're writing about. If they don't, you may have some revising to do. If your list of verbs includes dribble, pass, dunk, shoot, block, jump, foul, charge, and so on, your reader will have a clear sense that you were writing about what? Basketball. And chances are, if you are not using those kinds of verbs, your paper will not hold your reader's interest. Can't other kinds of words, like adjectives and adverbs, make my paper forceful? Those kinds of words are important, but not nearly as important as the verbs. Uh, let's go back to our example. Many students recognize that this sentence could be stronger, but they make a serious mistake. They ignore the verb, the engine, and waste energy polishing the hubcaps. Muggs is a very messy eater. Muggs is definitely a very messy eater. Muggs is most definitely the most messy eater I know. Add all the intensifiers you want, but very, definitely, and so on will never make that is as messy as drool. And you can't get Muggs to drool unless you focus on the verb. What if I can't think of any forceful verbs? Here's a trick that every good writer uses. When you proofread, check to see if some of your verbs are dressed up in nouns clothing. Many times you'll find that the verb you want is hiding in the sentence as a noun, often with a shun or if ending. If your focus is on solving mugs eating problems, make sure you describe that action with a verb, not a noun. Don't say, a bigger bowl might be the solution to mugs problem. Instead, ask yourself if that shun word should be a verb. In this case, it should because the change makes your sentence more direct and forceful. A bigger bowl might solve Muggs' problem. Remember, avoid shun words unless you need them. In many cases, you can solve your writing problems by changing the way you see your solutions.